Have you ever observed a certain Pokemon and have pondered what it even was? Or what it might be based on? Well, we've all been in these situations before, so I've decided to dedicate minutes upon minutes of study to some of these Pokemon and their real-life counterparts, especially the ones which are heavily influenced by folklore and culture. Welcome to PokéLink. So, for the first installment of PokéLink, I will be conversing about a unique and very intriguing ghost-type Pokémon which has a deep connection to Japanese folklore. And today, I have a special guest who goes by the name Birdkeeper Toby. Hey Pokemon Masters, hey Swords Dance, I cannot wait to get into the details about this Pokemon. Most definitely. So, as everyone can tell from the title and the thumbnail, the Pokemon we'll be dissecting today will be Spirit Tomb. So Toby, how about we dive right into the details of this Pokemon? So Spirit Tomb is a dual ghost and dark type Pokemon that was introduced in Generation 4 in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and it's obtainable through an item known as the Odd Keystone. The Og Keystone is a bizarre item with a crack going down the middle and two dots gracing the surface of the stone. It looks kind of like a frowny face. But it gets even more menacing when Spiritune finally erupts from the stone. It's this purple ghostly plasma. This purple energy Pokemon has the most menacing face with green crescent eyes and a rigid mouth and orbs of green energy circulate constantly around its face. That's quite the detailed description. Now, let's get into the Pokedex entries for this Pokemon. As for Pokemon Diamond, it states, A Pokemon that was formed by 108 spirits. It is bound to a fissure in an odd keystone. As for Pokemon Pearl, It was bound to a fissure in an odd keystone as punishments for misdeeds 500 years ago. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and mention one more, which is from the 5th generation games of Black and White and Black and White 2. It states, Its constant mischief and misdeeds resulted it being bound to an odd keystone by a mysterious spell. Those are a few Pokedex entries to name a few. So apparently, Spirit Tomb is a stone with the 108 spirits trapped inside of it. That's actually pretty spooky. So it's just something I want to add to your 108 statement that I think is pretty intriguing. If you take a look at its stats, its defense and special defense are both pretty high at 108. Not only that, but its weight is 108 kilograms. And in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, you can find it in Sea Marvel, which is found on Route 108. Is this all a coincidence? Great point, Toby. All of this is actually linked to a few things from Chinese and Japanese folklore and myth, so I don't think it's a coincidence at all. So our first question is, why the number 108? I'll go through a few relevant origins that Spirit Tomb is most likely influenced by. But first of all, I'll go over Spirit Tomb's Japanese name, and then from there I will discuss the connections it has with the history. So, Spirit Tomb goes by the name Mikaruge. If you dissect it, Mika could possibly mean an earthenware pot, and could be something like an urn. Or it could be referring to the word like Mikageishi, which means granite. This could definitely be referring to its base, but one thing I would like to point out is the kanji for the word. The first two kanji, together, could mean spirit of the dead. It also has a few other meanings, but I can see Spirit Tomb's Japanese name referring to it in a way. Those were a few possible name origins. Now to Spirit Tomb's connection to Japanese folklore. Spirit Tomb is heavily based off, and I'm sorry if I'm about to pronounce this wrong, the Jibakuri. And the Jibakuri are spirits in Japanese folklore that are normally bound to a single place or item. This is because the Jibakuri experienced some kind of very strong emotion right before it died. Stress, anger, hate. Either that or when it died, it was killed in a very quick and sudden accident, and it can't accept its own death. Now, to link this all together, I'll go over a Chinese story which was later exported to Japan and became a big hit, especially during the Edo period. This story is called Water Margin, or Sui Koden in Japanese. The story is based on 108 bandits from the Song Dynasty China, which traveled to Mount Liang to create an army. Soon, they are recognized by the government and they went on expeditions to fight off foreign invaders. Though the interesting origin of these 108 bandits comes from a stone monument many years before the 108 bandits. Apparently, 108 spirits were imprisoned in a stone still. This monument had been protected by monks for generations. 
But one day, an army general foolishly ordered his army to remove this monument, which led to the release of the 108 spirits. These spirits had atoned for their sins and were reincarnated centuries later as the 108 bandits of the story. There are some other points I could add, but they are less important. For instance, in Buddhism, there are apparently 108 temptations. A person must overcome those 108 temptations to fully reach nirvana. In Japanese, these temptations are called bono, and it has some significance to Japan's New Year's, known as Omisoka. Just to briefly describe it, every New Year's, temples all across Japan will ring their bronze temple bells 108 times at midnight, each ring representing the 108 elements of bono, or earthly temptations. That was definitely a long explanation of Spiritomb's true origins, and it took a dark turn there with the Jibakuri aspect of it. However, that might mean something, because if it's 108 spirits bound to something, then it's either people or Pokemon, right? No matter how you slice it, these people or Pokemon before they died must have experienced some kind of very strong emotion like stress or sadness or hate. This could turn out to be something very eerie and very dark, which is something we'll discuss further over on my channel. This is where the Pokemon theory about what Spiritomb is doing in Sea Marvel. Of course, Toby. Now, that was Spiritomb's influences. Spiritomb surely does have a rich background, and I hope everyone enjoyed this Pokelink. Be sure to comment any opinions on Spiritomb, and possibly some other information we might have forgotten in this video. Now, I would definitely want everyone to check out Birdkeeper's Toby's channel for another collaboration we did on a theory specifically about the Seamawville and its dark past. So be sure to check it out now. You can click the annotations in this video or find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.